Morning Show. I am your host, Nate Riggs, and it is hard to believe that we are already on episode number six. It has been a good run up to this point. For this week's show, we're going to discuss change management in a corporate environment, specifically around the topic of marketing. Uh, our guest today is in the thick of that right now. Matt Minard is the director of marketing at Simonton Windows, and Matt earned a bachelor's degree from the Ohio State University in Family Resource Management and has been in marketing for 14 years, marketing and consulting, because that's what you do when you go into family resource management, you go into marketing. Uh, he began his career in the Ohio State government, which is really interesting. We'll dig into that a little bit. Working in various different positions, including campaign consultant and a legislative liaison, Matt began uh, working in a local agency, another Columbus agency, Weber & Associates, with roles in both marketing and consulting, and then transitioned to Simonton Windows, where he is now the director of marketing. I'd like to welcome Matt to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. No, thanks for, for being here. And so going back to this family management sure. degree, you now have a much bigger family to manage. So. I, I do. A new addition recently, four months old, and... Uh, you know, it's interesting because you don't think you uh, you use your degree that much. Family resource management was uh, was targeted to for me to be a financial planner, and uh, you know, got away from that a little bit through my career, and uh, have come back to it more recently with the addition of a of, of a child. So, well, congratulations <laughs> to that. Thank you. Uh, it's really interesting you bring up the financial management piece of marketing because right. that is something that you don't typically think associated with marketers. And right. yet that finance piece of it is very important in change management. So how has that impacted you as you've moved on into a marketing role? Well, I think, um, you know, like most departments, you need to be accountable. You need to be measurable. And um, marketing, as we know, has become that way. Um, it wasn't always that way. But uh, having that financial background has allowed me to come in specifically to Simonton Windows and really dig into the financial part of it. What are we returning on our investments? And that's that's really how I entered into Simonton Windows. The position uh, that I was hired there for was called Marketing Investment Manager, which was a little bit of a, a new position that was created by our president. Um, he was becoming very frustrated with, um, you know, not really uh, understanding or fully understanding uh, what Im what investments we were making in marketing and what, what that was returning us. So uh, I had a really nice blend of a financial background and a marketing background that allowed me to come in and, and look at things differently than, than had been tradition there. It's really inter interesting that your president took that approach because, I, and I think I've said this on the show before, everybody's focused on ROI, but they're really just focused on the R part of that formula mm -hmm. and oftentimes overlook the investment piece of it. Right. Uh, is that kind of what you found in, as you've worked through this position? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a soft side of marketing that is hard for some uh, executives who haven't come from a marketing background to understand. And I think there's this uh, constant effort to try to understand that. And one of the things I did as I, when I came in was really just look at everything, turn over a lot of leaves, dig deep, understand what we're investing in. And not all of marketing is really uh, very easily measurable, but you have to find creative ways to measure it. And actually, you know, as marketers, we're creative, right? So we are, you know, we were looking at creative ways to measure things. It wasn't always uh, about dollars of revenue. It could have been, um, you know, number of, of, of reps or customers that touched you in some way or pride you with questions from something that you've uh, put out there. So you had to really get creative about ways to measure uh, different yeah. investments. So also your background with Weber & Associates, mm -hmm. another great Columbus firm. Sure. Uh, as a consultant, how has that impacted your role today as, as kind of this change agent in marketing? Yeah, so the, the clients I had at, at uh, Weber & Associates were, uh, you know, were very much undergoing big changes. They were big Fortune 500 companies. Um, you know, one, one week they'd have a, a department of people that would do X in marketing, and then uh, yeah. the next day they would be gone. And so there was constant uh, changing and adaptation, um, especially in a large organization. And so uh, what it really uh, allowed us to do is, is focus on um, you know, really the end goal for our clients and understand, you know, where do they want to go and help kind of bring that to life yeah. for them. Uh, it's kind of hard for them sometimes to navigate through when there's a lot of stuff in front of them, big changes. Uh, a lot of times you can get paralyzed by that, and it was, it was our uh, responsibility, or we took on the responsibility to really help them see what the future possibilities could be for them. So. Well, this teases us up for a really interesting discussion. We're going to be back with more from Matt here in just a minute. 
The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. We change the way businesses understand and use digital media to connect with customers, earn their trust, and win their business for life. Learn more at nrmedia.biz. And we are back. We're going to go into our marketing insights segment of the show. And uh, again, our topic this week is change management and marketing. According to Harvard Business Review, two out of three change management initiatives fail. Uh, Amazon.com, for instance, has about 15,000 titles that we can find on the topic. And there's a lot of debate around that 70% statistic, the, the amount of, of change initiatives that fail in an organization. So I'd like to toss this to Matt. What do you think of this two out of three figure? Is this legit? And if it is, why do you think some of these change initiatives fail? Uh, yeah, I think it actually probably is pretty accurate. You know, as a, uh, from my perspective as a company, uh, when we go into planning processes for the beginning of the year, budget planning, strategic initiatives, um, we might identify 10 opportunities that we want to explore uh, for the company that yeah. you know touches operations, sales, and marketing. And then those are big things. And if we throw 10 of them out there and we decide to move forward with those 10, um, as we get further into the investigation of those 10 and understand the impacts uh, on our operations, on our customers, uh, on our departments, our employees, et cetera, um, we may actually, by the middle or end of the year, whittle that down to three yeah. that actually we feel are viable to continue on. So the 70% failure statistic, uh, that doesn't really surprise me too much. It's interesting, though, what you just said would be maybe there's a problem with the wording failure versus uh, completion. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like rather than failure, there's a conscious decision made because of various different factors that you know, maybe that we thought we wanted to change in this way, mm -hmm. and after we really got into it, we decided, no, that wasn't where we needed to go. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I can think of several initiatives where, you know, it, you look at it from a lot of different ways internally. It looks like a win-win-win. You start to implement some of those changes. You dig deeper. You don't understand sometimes what the impact uh, it has on your customer yeah. and the way they're doing business, the way they're marketing themselves, the way they're they're out there selling uh, uh, every day. So uh, you can get to a point where uh, when that comes to life, you say, hey, maybe, maybe this wasn't what we thought it was going to be. And um, it, it maybe gets to a point where you have to retract. It's just kind of common knowledge then that one of probably the, the hardest things about change is that people don't really like it. People like to do things the way that they've always been doing it. And that's a, a human thing. So with that in change management, how do you attack the human piece of it in terms of convincing people that it's safe to change, it's okay to change? It's a good question, Nate. You know, I uh, read a small business blog recently and I saw a, uh, a topic on change management and there was a quote that said, change is difficult, uh, not changing is fatal. I completely agree with that. And, you know, when I look at the human element of it, um, a, a lot of people do get comfortable. They do get set in what they're doing uh, on a daily basis. It becomes comfortable to them. Um, I'm, I'm constantly trying to push people to go outside their comfort zone, challenge themselves, and have fun while doing it. Um, I think the way you can do that is, is uh, one of the methods I've, I've tried is to give some people responsibility to take some risks, mm -hmm. albeit maybe small risks, but risks that uh, could be perceived as fun, yeah. uh, adventurous, especially for creative types and marketers. Um, and that usually gets them out of the shell saying, hey, we, we can go try something. We have a, an ability to research something or not, uh, you know, something, an issue, opportunity, and then uh, take a chance to make it better. And, uh, you know, so I've tried to give my team and others I've worked with some responsibility to go out and take some risks, show them how fun that can be. Um, and it helps usually get them out of, out of that habit of change is bad. It's a really great takeaway with, you know, we'll give you the chance to take a risk, and with that comes the responsibility. Right. So great right. tip. Yeah. We're going to be back with more from Matt Minard in terms of marketing change management, specifically at Simonton right after these messages. Cisco estimates that by 2018, video will represent 79% of all internet traffic. Take your marketing program to the next level by engineering video content libraries that are strategically designed to drive traffic, convert customers, and build lasting brand loyalty. Get a sneak peek of the Video Engineering Playbook, a new book by Nate Riggs. Download your free sample chapters by clicking this link. 
we are back with Matt Minard of Simonton Windows. Matt, in talking about change management, you recently at your company uh, have seen a lot of change. Uh, Simonton was recently acquired by Plygem, which is another very, very large uh, building products manufacturer. Talk to us a little bit about that environment and, and how has that started to spark change across the organization? Yeah, it's, it's actually been a very positive change for us. Um, we, we were acquired by Plygem in the fall, and they, uh, like us, are an exterior building products company. It aligns us with uh, similar, similar products and like minds, and so far it's been good. There's always the, the fear of what an acquisition means. Mm -hmm. Do we get absorbed? Do we uh, report to different people and, and that kind of thing? I think you have to... Um, in a, in a case of an acquisition, be confident, show your work, show the history of your work and, and why it's been successful. And we took that approach and it's, it's been very successful to the point uh, of being involved more with Plygem's overall business. What we've done at Simonton, they wanna try to take pieces of that and impl implement across their business. So overall, it's been positive and it goes back to, you know we've been, we've been measurable. We set that in motion a few years ago and when you can prove results, uh, it's positive all around. So at its core, both Plygem and, and Simonton are inherently manufacturing organizations. You guys build window and, and other building products. Uh, I think a lot of marketers look at manufacturing and think that it is probably uh, an industry as a whole that may be a little bit behind the times in yes. terms of the digital movement, and yet that is something that you've been working very hard on. So in terms of driving change towards digital and kind of the new era of marketing, uh, how has that process unfolded for you? Yeah, well, you know, as you said, a traditional traditional building materials manufacturers um, eager for change. Um, very old organizations uh, manufacture products, do them very well. Very operations, manufacturing, and sales based traditionally. Um, but as we know, uh, the, the homeowners changing, uh, contractors and remodelers are changing, and uh, the building materials industry had to had to uh, come along with that. Yeah. Um, homeowners are researching brands now more than ever, as you know. Contractors or modelers are typically small businesses for us, uh, so our customers, and um, they're very flexible, they're very nimble, and they're very aggressive in how they wanna grow their business. In some cases, uh, many of them uh, adopted digital marketing and different uh, tactics before we did. So. We had no choice, in my opinion, but to uh, step up to the plate and figure out what uh, the role of manufacturers are uh, in creating full demand for homeowners and, and contractors. So uh, really, we set that in motion um, three years ago. I came on board. We looked at some of our investments, which were very traditional, and, and made a choice to say, hey, we want to be a consumer-focused brand, but not a not a consumer brand. We, yeah. we're, we're not going to spend... Uh, millions of dollars in advertising to get our brand out there. But we want to be more consumer focused so that when homeowners are looking for home remodeling, home, uh, you know, home projects, um, we can capture them, educate them on the return that those projects have, and then turn those into qualified leads and route those to the people that are important to us, which you know, at our core is our contractor and dealer base, which is our customer. So that required a, a lot of effort as far as, um, you know, uh, we, we made the decision to uh, implement a marketing automation system, HubSpot, internally that allows us to capture the homeowner information, route leads to our dealers, and uh, it's been a long road. Uh, we've got a lot of learnings we still need to, to work through, but it's been successful and people have noticed the, the positive change. So with, yeah, you bring up an interesting point. With change comes systems change, right? Yes. A lot of this technology. And yet you guys, your customer is this nationwide network of dealers, builders, uh, various different contractors. Correct. Now you have to roll out that change, not only across geographic boundaries, but also across skill levels right. in, in terms of how those businesses understand marketing. What hurdles have you faced in that? Uh, a lot of hurdles. I mean, we've... we've um, it's interesting you talk about the dealer remodeler base and you're talking about uh, 1,800 or more businesses that yeah. you're working with. Businesses that are not only selling your product but selling a lot of other products and um, maybe in areas where business has slowed significantly and so they're, they're doing a lot of things to try to, to get that business back. Um, there has been some, uh, you know, 
some hesitation to adopt technology. Um, but you know, we've we've kind of segmented our our contractor and remodeler base in a way that I think allows us to better target them. So you know, we we often say there's uh, contractors and dealers that are there to fill the demand yeah. for home remodeling and building products, and there's uh, the types that will create demand. So the marketers and, and sellers. We've chose to focus first on the marketers and sellers, yeah. um, because we feel like we can have the influence, the training, their time to say, "Hey, here's how as a manufacturer we're going to make your business better." We've got trainings and you know trainings on things from uh, best in class you know in home sales techniques to uh, how can you acquire your own leads while on the job site by canvassing around your your project. Um, the fillers of demand, um, we're still working on that piece because. Yeah. You know, those are the ones that are traditionally more installer based. They're not the marketers and sellers, but they'll they'll meet the demand that they have in their market. Probably not grow as quick as the as the marketers and sellers. So then that falls on Simonton in, in right. the order of helping to create that demand and fill the gap. Correct. Yeah, and and you know, that's that's done by being that consumer focused company and understanding you know what homeowners are searching for and um, trying to provide education. Um, we make windows, and replacing your windows is a, it's a difficult uh, thing to understand. Yeah. Most homeowners we found don't know where to start. They don't know how much things cost. Uh, they don't know where to go. Uh, gone are the day, I think, where you had that uh, trusted advisor or contractor that you used for everything. Yeah. And so um, we're trying to fill that void by educating uh, homeowners, being there when they're asking those basic questions, and then trying to convert them over to a lead that we can give to that uh, that dealer in our network. So you mentioned too that this for you has been kind of a three-year work initiative. Correct. As a leader, how have you changed? How has your management style changed in terms of taking on all of this change in the organization and working to roll it out? That's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think it's made me uh, dig really deep into our customer. And, um, you know, over the past three years, I don't know how many customers I've visited. Um, gone to their place of business, looked at their showroom, talked to their staff, um, really got an understanding of what their goals are. Uh, three years, five years, you know, when do you want to hang it up and do something else? And by doing that and creating that direct relationship, we've really understood them as a business, what their goals are, and then have been able to adapt our message to them and, and really put together um, very custom and tailored programs to help them grow with Simonton uh, so that, in fact, we can, we can grow together. So I'd say the big takeaway, I, I've, I've, been, um, I've been very, uh, very in tune with our customer. I've dug really deep. I've not let my perceptions of what I think a customer is facing uh, take over, and I've kind of gotten it straight from the source. So we're on episode five of the show now, and it's interesting because now we're starting to see some analytics on the audience, yep. and we're noticing that there are a lot of folks who, who watch this or, or listen to it mm -hmm. that are in a very similar role to you, in a very similar position in the organization. If you had to leave those people with three things, three tips of, or considerations of, of what they should be doing in their role, what are those three things? Wow, good question. Um, you know, never be afraid to be measurable, one. Um, and like I said before, um, that's very difficult in marketing sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, as marketers and as more creative uh, type of people, you know, you have to sometimes get creative on how you're going to be measurable uh, and explain to people what those measurements mean. Um, second, I would say, um, as, as I said before, don't be afraid to take risk. And um, you know, make sure it's a make sure it's a risk that you can manage. Um, but you're going to have to take risk, and and that's uh, that's what what has gotten us to the point we where we are now, and it's it's paid uh, paid off for us. And the third, I would say again, um, never be afraid to to know your customer even more. Um, you know, get in there, help them understand why you want to get to know them. Um, the, as you build that relationship. Um, you know, that's the, that's the intangible stuff that keeps them coming back to you and keep, keeps them loyal to you. And that's, that's the approach we've taken with our dealer network. Hey, they got a question, they're struggling with something. Let's put somebody in the car or on a plane and get out there and see them, yeah. spend a couple days with them, go in the home with them and, and understand what makes them tick. 
So you guys are a brand that markets to consumer, uh, and we're getting into the point where hopefully very soon the weather's going to warm up and people yeah. think about replacing their windows. Yeah. Simonton is all over the place online. Where can people find more about your products, services, and, and other marketers to kind of look at what you guys are doing? Yeah, we're on uh, simonton.com, obviously, is our corporate website. Um, there's, as I said, a network of over 1,800 dealers on, on simonton.com that install our product across the, uh, across the country. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping uh, this spring, early this spring, to launch a uh, consumer rebate to the from the manufacturer to the consumer uh, to help uh, incentivize a homeowner to at least explore a window remodeling or door remodeling project. Um, and yeah, we'll continue to market ourselves through our dealers, through Simonton, um, through our distribution network that distributes our product across the country. Um, you know, we've got a blog that launched, the window seat, uh, recently, last fall, that has a lot of helpful tips and content and articles that uh, is just a great resource, not only for window and door replacement projects, but home remodeling in general. Um, yeah. Often what we've seen through search and some other analytics is that um, now that the economy has recovered and uh, homeowners have uh, available money to spend on their homes, yeah. um, they're looking at things like, should I replace my floor or remodel my bathroom? Should I replace my kitchen or finish my basement? So we're trying to help consumers through those, those questions in an effort to hopefully steer them to the benefits of window and door replacement and, and show them what the return on their investment can be. As a marketer living in Columbus in a Columbus-based business, yep. business uh, what has the Columbus environment meant to you in your career? Oh, it's meant so much. Um, you know, I've lived in Columbus for 16 or 17 years, and I think the city has changed so much for the better. It's no longer a, yeah. uh, you know, a, a large college town. It's a town with a thriving business, um, a lot of great companies, a lot of great employers here. And, you know, one of the things I've learned through my experience here and just networking locally, uh, there's a lot of great talent here and uh, a lot of talent that uh, kind of makes you challenged as a professional. And so being challenged like that, I think, has been important for my growth and the growth of many businesses here to be able to, uh, to you know, be challenged, make yourself better and make it a better environment for business. Well, thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. We are all finished up with this week's episode of the Columbus Marketing Show. Special thanks to Matt Myland, who is our guest from Simonton Windows. Make sure you check out simonton.com and their new blog, The Window Seat. Uh, you can find that uh, all over their website. Come back next week. We're going to be talking with Dan Harris, who is from the digital agency Minds On, and we're going to talk a little bit about B2B marketing. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group, and it's recorded right down here in our studio on East Main Street in downtown Columbus. You can catch the show on YouTube, our YouTube channel that you can find on the site, as well as the show notes on our blog published every Friday. It is nrmedia.news forward slash blog, and you can look for the show notes there for the resources. Uh, if you are the audio type, you can listen to the show on Spreaker. Uh, subscribe to that. And catch uh, special thanks to the NR Media Group production crew, Nate Marshall, who is the producer. Uh, we have Alex Foley, who is our inbound strategist, also a camera operation aficionado, uh, and Melissa Christian, who handles all the logistics and booking of the guests. As always, I am your host, Nate Riggs, and I will see you back here next week for another Columbus Marketing Show.